Hello everyone, this is Just a Dad. Today I'm going to show you how to unbox this Ego Zero Turn mower and we're going to put it together. So it comes in this really big crate. Okay, so it comes in a big semi truck that has to back up to your house. It did have a lift gate, so they were they did lift it off of the truck with that. And then they had a pallet jack and they rolled it into my garage. Now this is a metal crate and it is seven feet across. And width wise, it's about 45 inches. And it does stand off the floor about 30 and a half inches. Now it does have those forklift things there, but now the plastic comes off real easy. It just lifts up. After you cut, there's four zip ties in the corner. Cut those and you should be able to pull the black plastic up. Next, the first thing, the second thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take, we gotta open this first. We're gonna cut this zip tie. This is the accessory kit. It has some tools in there that we're gonna use to disassemble this this frame, but they want us to disassemble the frame in a certain order. Okay, so in here we've got a manual, we've got a quick start guide, but we do have some tools. These tools we can use to, to take apart the crate. One's a 14 millimeter and the other one's a 13 millimeter. And I think that's a wrench. Looks like the keys, we got some screws. Okay, so they're gonna want us to take this crate apart according to a, num a number they've got. So they've got like this one they want taken off first. Now it does say they're 13 millimeter or half inch. Okay, so they first want us to take this front brace off first. So there are two bolts down here and then it looks like there's two bolts. Yeah, two bigger bolts here. You're gonna put a nut on here. Okay, so I took the front frame off. Now just be careful, things do shift. Like when you take the last bolt out and take that off, it does kind of, things do kind of move a little bit. So just be careful. Okay, now you're going to move over to this side. You're going to take these two bottom bolts off. And then you're going to take this cross brace off and that bolt there. Okay, now you're going to move over to this side. These bolts can be a little challenging, but they come out okay. And then there's a big bolt here. Okay, front and sides are off. Now we're going to move around to the back and get the back screws, bolts right there. Okay, so the frame has all been removed. Now it says cut the nylon strap securing the front wheel. So it looks like there's quite a few of these. We'll do this on both sides. And we're gonna and cut the nylon strap securing the battery pack. Now one of those uh, zip ties holds this wheel chalk, so just be careful. We're gonna do that just a little bit later. Now the battery box is kind of heavy, so be careful. Okay, so here's what's in this battery box. Now I'm also gonna remove kind of tucked away underneath here. There was a zip tie holding that. This is the charger, looks like. Okay, I'm also going to cut this strap here that is holding that. Also here, there's another one of those straps I'm going to cut. Then there's a couple holding the seat on the back here. We're going to cut these, and we're going to take the seat out. Okay, so something else i got to remove is these straps. There's one on each of these back wheels, and it takes the same bolts. When I was removing the frame, it's in the frame removal, but I just kind of missed it. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this strap with the two bolts. Okay, so they want us to roll it off of the frame. Now, you may need to put like a little ramp there or something, but they want you to leave the steering wheel, all, all these zip ties for the steering wheel, they want you to leave them, and you're just going to release the brake. Okay, so the brake, it was mine was shipped with the brake pedal depressed. That means the brake, brake is applied. So to release the brake, you're just going to step on it and it'll ratchet up. That means the brake is released and this should move freely. Now I might have to remove these big pieces of cardboard. Okay, so I was fortunate enough to have these ramps I use for changing oil in the vehicle, but it looks like you're gonna need about a five inch, some sort of ramp to roll this off with. Okay, I'm gonna try to roll it off. Doesn't take a lot of effort, but it does help having those ramps. Okay, so now we're gonna install the seat. We need four of these screws and this Allen wrench. Okay, so kind of put the seat like this. We gotta connect this connector here. So there's where it routes. We need to keep it in that clamp and connect it right there. Now there is some grease on it, that's okay. That little tab there, that's gonna catch that little tab there. So you're gonna slide it in like that. You may have to pull the seat up a little bit more. It is kind of messy, so be careful. Yeah, and it should slide on and then snap on like that. Okay, now set the seat down 
and we got to put the two front screws in first. Make sure that wire harness is in front, but there's two holes we're going to line up. Now this proves to be a little tricky because one rail was out a little farther. So you may have to loosen or pull the handle up and get the rail to move and it's going to swivel in the back. That's okay. We want to get these kind of started then we're going to tighten in the back ones. Okay. Leave those front ones just a tighten them down almost all the way. Pull this up and ratchet the seat forward. That'll expose where the ones in the back go. Now it's going to be a little confusing because this may want to move on you, but line up the holes and you're going to put these screws in and tighten them down. I'll tighten these and then I'll go back and tighten the front ones. Okay, next is the steering wheel. So we're, it never said to cut these. So we're going to cut these and take the plastic off and in, install the steering wheel. Okay, so the next procedure is real kind of tricky. Now, once you take this off, this is really loose. So be careful. Now, what I found is I, do I did have to loosen this. We're eventually going to tighten this. So loosen this so that when you rotate this, you can slide those back all the way there. Now you're going to tighten this down. Mine did not want to go until I loosened that. So now I'm going to go ahead and tighten this until it is really, it's kind of, it's nice and tight. Okay. So that is tight. They do give you a specific torque on that. So don't over tight it. You could, that is plastic right there. You could break it, but let's go ahead and cut this zip tie. Now we're going to check tire pressures, make sure the tires are inflated properly. The rear big wheel should be, no, the front ones should be 32 PSI. The rear wheel should be 16. Okay, so mine had plenty of air in them. I checked. They came about 30, about 25 PSI and about 35 on the front. Okay, so now let's get the battery packs out. Now they don't come charged. Press this button. I've been charging mine a little bit with a separate charger, but that it doesn't come with, but it only had one bar. So they don't come charged. You got four of them. Back here, there's like a release. Lift this up. We're going to take this out and take this plastic off. And just make sure there's nothing down in here. Make sure it's all nice and clean. Now, it's very easy. They got like a track that the battery goes on. So just slide it in and it'll click. If you want to remove it, you're going to push this button. It pops it up. You can even check the status of the charge when it's installed. Okay, so I took the charger out of the box. You're going to plug it into an outlet. It's just a two prong outlet. Here's what this end looks like. And then it's going to plug in right here. This is how you're going to charge it. And all the batteries will start to charge as soon as you plug it in. So let's go over the specs of the battery charger. It looks like it's 120 volts, 60 hertz, 1,600 watts. Now it does have a fan in there and I can feel some air coming out the top. And the box measures about 16 inches by about nine and a quarter. Height wise, you're looking at about five inches. The cord that plugs into the mower is about four and a half inches long, four and a half feet long. Now the plug that plugs into a wall outlet is about five and a half feet long. That looks like just some sort of filter. It's not, you don't disconnect anything there. Okay, so my mower came with the 12 amp hour battery, so it says it'll take 210 minutes for six. I've only got four batteries. Now you are supposed to mount the wall charger on a wall and that's how it goes. And then there is a place to hook the receptacle that you plug into the mower. Okay, so something I just noticed, the steering wheel does tell you the a battery percentage and I don't even have the key plugged in. So the key is in that box. You get two keys and they're both the same. Okay, you're gonna insert the key. Press this for three seconds. Now my display is lit up. Okay, I wasn't holding it long enough. You've got to make sure you put the key in, press this for three seconds, it's going to beep. Okay, once it beeps, now it's on. The display may look like it's on, but I didn't hear that beep, and now it is on. Okay, so you got to press these at the same time. Now that light lights up. Now when I press on the accelerator, it will go forward. If I want to go reverse, I'm going to hold these, and then it will go reverse. Okay, so I drove it out to the uh, grass, now, I'm not moving, but I'm going to pull this up. That turns the blades on. Push it down to turn the blades off. Now, there is a safety switch on the seat. So in order for this to be working, I do have to be seated on the seat. 
Okay, so when you want to drive it, make sure the brake pedal is disengaged. That's engaged. Just press it and it pops up. Now it says to press the, this button. That's going to control your speed. It comes out of the box right about there, but it says start off in slow. Now something I had to get used to, you got to pull both of these at the same time in order for it to go. Okay, so once you've got this green light, that means when you press the pedal, it's going to go forward. And again, if I want to go reverse, I've got to hold both of these. Oh, actually, I just have to hold one. One or the other to go reverse. That's pretty nice. And if I let go, it goes forward. Now, this is not a touch screen, but I have buttons on the side here. So this is the blade speed. I can go from sport, control, standard. I can turn the headlights on and off. And then this is how fast you're going to go. There is an hour meter to let you know how many hours you've been on it. Kind of a display of the battery packs. I've got four battery packs installed. I like that it's constantly giving you an overall battery percentage. So that's how much battery I have left. So I'm going to adjust the height of the mower. It's very simple. And I simply just pull this up. I can adjust the speed. And how fast I go. I've got the blade off now. Now let's just floor it. It goes pretty fast. Okay, so if you leave it on and you just get off the seat, it does beep at you. Now, something else I am noticing, the parking brake is going to be critical. Normally, I can park a mower. Um, this isn't a very big of an incline on my driveway, but it is starting to creep a little bit. So that I'm going to have to get used to using that parking brake. You know what? It was beeping because it, it knew it was moving. That's pretty smart. Um, wow. I just learned something. So it would not stop beeping. It was randomly beeping all the time, and I couldn't figure out why. It's because it sensed that it was moving, and I needed to set the parking brake. Maybe it wants you to set the parking brake every time you get off of it, even if it's on a level surface. Again, I'm not really sure. I got a lot to learn. But that parking brake is going to get it to stop beeping. Okay, so I'm going to practice mowing around this tree, and I'm going to do different speeds. So let's turn the blade on. I've got it on two. Let's go to three. Now this takes some getting used to. Now let's just say I want to mow. It's very easy to operate. Okay, so I've got like a nice little storage here, USB charging. Again, don't forget to lift this lever up and you can slide the seat forward and back. And I also have the seat adjustment as far as how firm or the suspension is on the seat. We can also adjust, these are the anti-scallop wheels. I think there's three positions. Also in the manual it talks about there's an app for your phone. You can download the app and make sure the firmware for the mower is up to date. And there's those different positions for the anti-scalp wheels. Kind of talks about those. So it looks like some really good metal, but you're going to have to get rid of the metal. Be a, a great thing to recycle. And then you do have the big frame. It is kind of heavy. So I purchased this right off the Amazon website for $6,000. Okay, so I'm going to be doing several videos on this. I'm going to be doing a video just how to download the app and connect it to the mower. I think that's going to be very important because it says it wants to update the firmware. And then another thing I like about this is I got it's got two slots for other batteries. I guess I should have put these up here and then the extra ones go down here. But I've got like a leaf blower 
and a chainsaw that came with batteries that I can put in here and use as the charger. And when I want to use those, I can put them, in, leave them in the mower or use them in the chainsaw. And the video I'll be doing, I'm gonna, we're going to use it. This is going to be our full-time mower. Um, we live in central Illinois. We live with a lot of trees, so there's a lot of sticks, but the grass is growing really fast right now. It's really thick grass, and we're going to be cutting it. We have to cut our grass about every three or four days, so it's going to get a lot of use. So I'll give a real-world update on this, but so far, I'm very impressed with it so far. I, you know, getting it out of that crate, um, that's kind of like the crate that gets shipped to, a, to a, like Lowe's and Home Depot and all that, and they put it together for you. So you have to deal with that metal, but it really wasn't that bad to put together. Now, I did get this off of Amazon. I will put a link to it. Um, so if you click on the link, you can buy it from Amazon. It won't cost you anymore, but I do get a commission from the sale. I did buy this mower with my own money. I did a lot of research before I spent this type of money on a mower. And the main reasons I went with this, Ego has been around a while. I remember seeing a mower, I think, 10 years ago when they first came out maybe with a push mower. And I thought, oh, that looks, I don't know about battery. I don't know. But here it is, 2023. And I think this is a really good deal. I just think they've been making them a long time. The reviews I've read on them are really good. And, and so far, I'm very impressed with it. it. It seems to work very well. And we decided to go with this, just a traditional steering wheel. We've never had the zero turn with the levers. We've always had a traditional mower. And again, not disappointed in that at all. Let's go over measurements real quick. So with that down, it's right at 53, almost 52 inches. Now mine did come with a hitch and it was already installed. Let's measure front to back. Front to back is about 78 inches. Height wise, you're looking at about 44 inches. The steering wheel is the tallest part. Yeah, the seat has a lot of padding. It seems very well made. I like the armrests. Now I'm six foot two and I had the seat all the way back and I felt perfectly normal. It felt just fine to me. Again, this all came assembled. There's what the plates look like. They're really sharp. I got some side LEDs. Again, super excited about this mower. I hope this video helps. Thanks everybody for watching.